Hello, everyone. My name is Markus Paklepper, and um, yeah, first of all, welcome to our biomedical engineering session. Today, we are going to present to you a little bit more about the biomedical engineering program here at the University of Dundee. And I'm not here by myself. I've got um, some colleagues together here with me and also one of our students. And today we are going to work together with Ji Hong Huang, who's our lead in biomedical engineering. We've got also Alejandra uh, Anzeta Gasa with us, and she's going to talk about um, uh, also as a member of staff uh, about the biomedical engineering degree. And then lastly, we've got also Fergus with us, who's a student in our first year. And together we are going to discuss a little bit more about biomedical engineering, what it's like to actually study in Dundee, and um, you will then also have a chance to ask any questions. So I'm going to start with a brief overview of where we're actually sitting within the university structure. Um, the university has many different schools and we're actually part of the School of Science and Engineering. And within this school, we are bringing together basically all the experts in the field of science and engineering in the University of Dundee. Um, but we are also collaborating a lot in between the different schools and programs. So I'm just going to share my screen um, to actually show you quickly a short presentation. Before I actually start presenting, um, we've got our Q&A function in the chat, which you can make use of and which I would really recommend you are making use of because this gives you an opportunity to um, directly interact with us and ask any questions. And you can also ask any questions which are not even related to what we are talking about at this point. So if there's anything which you really, really want to know, just put it in there. Uh, and while I might not even uh, immediately pick up on it, we will then later on discuss it or just respond directly in the Q&A function. So as I said, we are sitting in the School of Science and Engineering and in the School of Science and Engineering, we've got various different subject areas and the subject area where we are sitting is called engineering. So if we are looking into this, we are sitting in an infrastructure which is supporting research on a very high level in the school. And this is not necessarily important for you if you are thinking about applying at a university right now as an undergraduate student. But if you think about, let's say, your personal development within your career, research is something very important because this can lead, for example, into a career in development. But even if you would work, let's say, more in sales, um, then you still need to have a good understanding of um, uh, the, let's say, the fundamental concepts. And that's why it's so important um, that you've got, let's say, also the right support to develop your research skills. And that's why I would like to highlight this. So we are um, a top university for research in engineering, and in particular in biomedical engineering. Now, as I said, this is quite important because we are working um, on the interface basically between applications and the research. But how do we combine this now within the different subject areas within our school? Um, now, this works quite well because we are actually bringing in the experts from the different subject areas to teach on our modules. So if you're looking at the School of Science and Engineering, we've got beyond engineering also anatomy and forensic anthropology. Now, how does this work together with engineering? When we are talking about biomedical engineering, we've got an excellent example because there we actually have the experts from anatomy to teach our students the structure of the human body, for example. We've got our subject area of computing where we've got also experts to teach students, for example, um, image processing. Yeah, So this is linking again quite well into what we are doing. Then within engineering, we see biomedical engineering together with civil and mechanical engineering. I will talk about this later on a little bit more. Um, for now, we just move on. Mass and physics is our last subject area, our last um, area where we collaborate with within the school, but also the last um, area within the school itself. So there we've got experts who are working with us to deliver in particular the core content in mass and physics. And this is what's happening in the first year in particular. Now, Engineering at Dundee is a very um, active area where we are really trying to bring as much hands-on content to our students, and we are doing this in a hands-on approach. 
Now, why do I actually show you all of this? Um, the key takeaway there is that you can actually switch between the degrees during your first um, year at Dundee. So after finishing your first year, you can still switch onto a different degree. And that's quite important because in a lot of cases, you are starting at university without necessarily really having a good feel for what you would like to study. And rather than having to commit some, uh, to something where you are then continuing and you might actually notice it's not quite for you, you can still switch between the degrees. The first year is common in engineering, so you are studying together with the students from civil and mechanical engineering, and there it's more about, let's say, really building the foundation in engineering, learning more about math and physics before you are then continuing into the core content in biomedical engineering. Now, in those different subject areas, we are offering a lot of different undergraduate degrees. The ones which are important for you here are the one in engineering and obviously the one in biomedical engineering to start with. But then we've got also degrees in civil and mechanical engineering, and they are all linked together. Um, and as I said, you can actually swap between the degrees after your first year. Afterwards, they are getting very, let's say, distinct. They are very different because you need to really get specialized knowledge if you want to be, for example, a mechanical engineer instead of a biomedical engineer. Now, what sets us apart um, from uh, other universities is our infrastructure. And the facilities themselves might not be really different, um, but it's something I would like to highlight. Our school is investing into a lot of resources for the students, and I'm not necessarily the person to talk about this, but we've got Fergus with us. We can talk about this later on to talk more about the student perspective. Yeah, so what's it like to actually study at Dundee? And while obviously during the current situation due to the pandemic, the access to campus was restricted, we are moving more again to on-campus activities and our hope is to return then obviously next term to normal on-campus activities. And that's when you can actually make use of all those nice facilities where you've got nice common rooms, you've got um, high-end uh, IT facilities. And what we are focusing on is a flexible, a flexible approach. So we are setting up basically our rooms in a way that everyone can make use of it but in particular also work together. And that's an important takeaway. If you're studying engineering, you are going to be part of a team at some point. So we are really trying to bring this in as early as possible. So when you start studying with us, you would immediately start with group projects to collaborate and to learn how to actually work effectively together as a group. Um, so the key points for engineering at Dundee are in general that we are providing active learning and while this might be something you're hearing a lot about at the moment during the pandemic since universities had to move more on to online teaching, I want to highlight that we've been doing this for years before. Active learning means that we are combining um, let's say practical sessions with a lecture and we are moving now on to a more um, let's say um, active approach where you are also let's say discussing the content in more depth rather than just hearing from us in a lecture. We've got excellent facilities, um, we've got opportunities for students to switch between degrees and the last thing I want to highlight is just the student voice where students and academics are actually working together to enhance the program. Now I'm not going too much into detail here because we've got actually more time to discuss this in the context of biomedical engineering and I'm going to stop presenting at this point and I will hand over to Alejandra who's going to now talk to all of us and we will then answer some questions uh, which are hopefully also interesting for you. But in the meantime, again, make use of the Q&A, put any questions in there and we are going to answer them and respond to them. And otherwise, um, yeah, I will just hand over to Alejandra and we take it from there. Alejandra, you muted. Sorry, it's always that part. <laughs> okay, so hello. Uh, so Marcus very kindly uh, introduced me. My name is Alejandra Anceta, and I'm a lecturer at the Biomedical Engineering uh, program. My expertise is in rehabilitation, uh, more specifically, how we can take electrophysiological signals, uh, that means signals that our body produces, to understand a bit more how we can interact with the world, uh, brain machine interfaces, 
um, how we can understand health, disease, injury, and this is just one area of expertise that we have at Dundee. By the way, sorry about those <laughs> noises, it's not me. My neighbor is doing some uh, work in, in his house, so do I, I do apologize for that noise. Um, so I think you will all want to know how biomedical engineering at this university um, is different to other programs with other universities. And the main reason is our application of engineering in the medical context. We have nine worlds, which is one of the best um, uh, teaching hospitals in Europe. And we they're just our neighbors and we work together. And in fact, the School of Medicine uh, that sits nine worlds is as well um, in our university. So you can imagine how it, multidisciplinary this uh, degree is. And as such, we focus as well on clinical applications and we maximize those links in the hospital. So you might find yourself with a project where you have um, a collaboration with a clinician that you might be some days at nine wells, or there might be other collaborations in which you might be with industry, um, but all based from Dundee. So those are kind of the key uh, differences and how we stand ourselves different to anyone else in the UK. Um, so I would like to um, introduce you to Professor Shi Hong Huang, uh, and I think she would want to talk to you a little bit about the study environment. And as Marcus said, we have Fergus with us as well. So he will give you the student perspective of what it's like to study at Dundee. So over to you, Shi Hong. Thank you, Ari. Um, I guess I can share the screen. Gosh. Here we go. Um, if I share my screen here. Yes. Just to show. Gosh. Is that the right screen? Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, so thank you for joining us all here. And biomedical engineering is a very unique and special group in Dundee. We are sitting between the School of Science and Engineering and also we have the link with medicine and Nine Wells Hospital there. For example, myself is and um, my office is in Nine Wells Hospital working in CRC, the Clinical Research Center there. In our group, we are not only just providing teaching, we're also doing lots and lots of research activities there. And another unique thing is we have very good facilities, in, including uh, shiny new labs in the imaging labs, medical devices and testing lab, which that lab is run by the Nine Wells Hospital colleagues. We have tissue mimicking labs for teaching and for research, and we have a large um, bundle of the imaging softwares for doing AI deep learning work and we're working with a um, clinical imaging facility units in Nine Wells Hospital to provide lots of uh, interesting projects around clinical imaging site for big data analysis there. We have, in our group, we have uh, people, we have people from engineering and um, from the School of Science and Engineering here. We have clinicians and surgeons from Nine Wells Hospital and School of Medicine. We also, in our group, we have a um, medical physics um, department from the uh, Nine Wells Hospital. They are many of, 70% of them are cl uh, clinical engineers and they are teaching our modules, especially in third year and year four, the final years there. And we say our group, our teaching is research led teaching. And there's good facilities provided by the research activities there, including a lot of in, uh, interesting research um, activities around imaging guided interventions, surgical technologies, and imaging, especially we're focusing on ultrasound photonics. And we have really great um, MRI facilities as well. Recently, the re research activities also covers CT and um, um, the, uh, the, 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 the other imaging modalities as well. So like um, radiation therapies, for example. 
and we have um, biomaterials and there's lots and lots of uh, um, interesting activities to support our teaching as well. And that's where I worked um, clinical imaging and intervention research center there. So um, that place that's uh, behind the Nine Wells Hospital and also part of the Nine Wells Hospital there. There's a lot of um, clinical um, trials is ongoing right now and especially towards the cancer research. So luckily our group, quite a few of us um, involving with the clinical um, research site and over there is very exciting work. Towards the third year and final year, and also the further, further study, the MSCs and PhD, student, uh, PhD projects, there's many of our students working in that um, clinical research center there and um, working with clinicians and, um, and the um, and surgeons and doing lots of interesting medical uh, applications over there. There's quite a few key stuff I'm wanting to mention here. Um, for example, imaging guided interventions. Professor Andrew Melzers, um, he is the one of the leading persons having a lot of European grants focusing on the um, imaging guided interventions. For example, using uh, MRI or ultrasound to guide the uh, non-invasive uh, surgeries and interventions. Very interesting work and that's needing um, working between the engineering and clinical people together. And surgical technology and robotics and we have Sir Alfred Kosheris who is really uh, recently retired. His group is, lead, is the leading and group for robotic, medical robotics there. We have very big groups on the bio, photonics and medical ultrasound. So for example, um, Peter Hoskin, for example, he is, we call that, is a legendary person. If you want to study anything related to ultrasound, you need to read his book first. And we have surgeons, for example, Professor Gulam Nabi, he is a urology surgeon and he's also doing a lot of imaging analysis work and his group is dealing with clinical cancer imaging and surgery site. And we have biomaterials especially focusing on the biocompatibilities for medical devices there. And Professor Ki Zhao is the leading um, professor in that group and his work is more related to improving the and biocompatibilities and the surface and coating materials for the uh, surgical tech and uh, surgical tools. And we have Ali here and and also Marcus is also working on the rehabilitation, focusing on rehabilitation, the general big rehabilitations and application there. Alongside with that, we have a talk center, which is part of Nine Wells Hospital there and there's lots of clinical works. So we're working on and um, working together as a big biomedical engineering group. And especially towards the, fi the final year, there's a lot of explosions working in nine wells. So there's lots of kind of people um, working. You can see these people over here. They are just between the um, engineers in working in science engineering and the people from the hospital and the um, School of Medicine working in Nivell side. So our students can have the opportunities to work in on the both side. So I'm, I'm the, the last things I want to mention another things is we working um, with medical physics department in Nivell's hospital as a one group. So the, especially the clinical engineering team, they are teaching many of the modules, providing projects for us, for our students. And um, we are wanting to see Dundee as a, one of the big um, training center for clinical engineers for Scotland and future, hopefully for training clinical engineers for UK. And um, yeah, so I'm stopping over here and I, I guess um, Marcus can add. 
and other things, the Dundee special things um, for Dundee. All right. So thank you very much, Jeong. Um, yeah, I think it's important to highlight that we've got this infrastructure in particular with the hospital. Um, within the hospital, we've got our own footprint, which means that our students can actually go there as well and um, not only do their projects there, but they will actually be taught there within the program. So in year three, for example, students are going to the hospital to learn about surgical skills, which Jeong already mentioned. And later on, they are also going there again to study more about medical instrumentation. So rather than us just replicating something on campus, we are bringing students directly to the hospital for the real life hospital experience. Um, now, this is not necessarily something you will see everywhere. It's really this infrastructure which sets us apart. And I think that's probably the, the biggest, um, let's say, advantage you are getting when you are coming to Dundee. Thank you very much, uh, both Xion and Marcus. Um, that was very um, informative, and I think we all want to hear from Fergus as well as, as a student. Um, if you can tell us what it's like to study, how's the study environment at Dundee, that would be great. Thank you, Fergus. Hello, I'm Fergus. I've just sort of finished my first year of the biomedical engineering degree. Um, First and foremost, it was a bit of an interesting experience. There was obviously an ongoing situation over the last year, so my experience was slightly different, uh, but I think it was very good how the university was able to respond to that and adapt the kind of um, teaching environment and how we were kind of handling things without impacting anyone's experience too much. As I think Marcus has covered, we are going forwards, trying to go back to the more traditional ways of learning, but um, I got very familiar with the online environment, which is good, is handy. Most of the way that the modules and things are, are formatted, there is a, a base hub, which makes it very easy to find out everything that you're trying to do. Um, and it keeps everything in one place. Talking of kind of everything in one place, the beauty of Dundee is that it is a sort of a campus that you're you're on, um, which means it's it's quite difficult to get lost, which is handy. Um, it's it's nice because our main building that the School of Engineering is, is hosted in, um, the Fulton building is kind of fairly kind of central to the campus and um, it's very easy to get from the from there to the library it's literally across the road so I find myself often uh, either if not in the common room which was a nice kind of little breakout area in the Fulton uh, getting some extra study time in very easy to go over to the library just to kind of get things printed and sorted from that point of view um, I think it was, yeah, as I say, it was quite difficult with the certain restrictions that were in place, but even with that, we still got to have um, time on campus, which was very, very good. It was it was well, well used time by the fact we had a split between certain things being online and certain things being on campus. We could have sort of little primer videos that had been pre-recorded, sort of pre-recorded lectures, um, which kind of created an, an asynchronous, so you didn't have to be doing things all at the same time. Um, but it meant when we were on campus, the time that we had there was was um, well used. We had a lot of kind of practical elements to the course, which meant that being kind of engineering students, we did get the opportunity to be on campus more than potentially some other uh, degrees had. Um, I think going forwards throughout the year, uh, the different year groups, there are a lot of practical elements to the, the degree, which is, is definitely something you want as an engineer. You want to kind of put what you're learning into practice. Um, we especially things like when we were doing the um, electronics kind of modules um, we were doing a lot of theory work but then we were getting the opportunity to do kind of a, a lab tutorial where we had an extended period where we could actually do experiments understand and kind of contextualize the principles of everything that we were trying to 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 do um, the other beauty of, of the way the things are laid out is the first year is kind of a, a more foundational so you are mixed in with a lot of other engineering disciplines um, so that's been great in terms of meeting other students. We've a, a few, a lot of my friends that I've developed over the last year have been potentially on other disciplines as well as from biomedical um, specifically, which has been really nice. It's been nice to kind of get that cross talk from everyone um, just to kind of see what everyone's experiences are, find out what everyone's motivation for, for getting into the university were 
as Marcus did touch upon earlier, there is an opportunity if you, for whatever reason, um, you, you've started on the biomedical course and you decide maybe it's not for you, you want to go to something else, you can eat very easily without having to, you don't have to relearn anything, you can kind of move over to mechanical um, or vice versa, you could start out on something mechanical and go, the biomedical engineers seem like the better people, so then you come and join us and then that's that's what we, we aim for. Um, Kind of with with that uh, in mind, again, just touching upon how the last year was a bit bit bizarre. We um, people like Marcus were very good for making sure that we didn't kind of lose our identity for who we were. He organised events where we were kind of had a a big group call meeting, but it meant we were going to meet the other people in the year and kind of introduce ourselves, find out about each other. It just meant we could still kind of identify as we are kind of biomedical students. We're getting to meet everyone, see everyone, uh, and kind of integrate in that that notion despite the fact that some people might not kind of either be on campus uh, or just have to kind of be semi-isolated to some degree um yeah generally speaking um as a student i've i found it kind of fantastic and, and quite inspiring so far being part of of the, the dundee crew and um, again things like the common room are facilities that are used quite extensively by all year groups so there's been a number of times i've even ended up kind of in conversations with people in later year groups just through kind of being in that environment, you're kind of sat all, everyone's working in the same group. They can kind of direct and kind of advise on certain things. Um, a lot of time even having kind of other staff and students kind of coming through, you kind of always find yourself kind of dropping into to conversations and, um, and enjoying that side of things. Um, apologies, I'm just trying to make sure I kind of cover some, some more of the actual student aspects. Um, we have kind of I have taken on some other roles within the university and um, things like being a kind of a, a class representative. So something like that is also very good because it's allowed a lot of the, the student feedback to be heard and make sure that the actual kind of degree is being formatted in a way that it's useful to people and that if there are any issues that they are being heard. We had regular meetings throughout the year as student reps to to make sure that um, if there were any issues arising, we were making sure those were addressed and um, Again, the, the staff themselves were being very good about being um, before each sort of lecture or lesson. They were they were making sure and asking, is everyone happy? Is there any issues? Is anyone struggling? Is anyone kind of in need of extra help? Um, as well as that, we do have certain modules were directed for specifically that point. It's sort of a, a personal development planning. Again, giving you an opportunity to sit down, put some things into writing. We, we work through certain things like um, a, a planner to make sure you've got kind of a plan of how you're you're splitting your time, which was a very handy exercise. I think things like that can be very beneficial and is kind of help to keep everyone on track and make sure everyone is on the same page and, and understanding what we are doing. I don't know if um, Marcus might want to jump in and kind of uh, make some points. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so I actually want to touch on a bit more, let's say, the formal structure of the degree, because obviously, if you're interested in the degree at Dundee, you would like to know a little bit more about the structure itself. You can find a lot of information online, but it's more about really the way we are teaching and where we are bringing in which expertise and which level of the degree. So I'm going to share my slides again, just briefly to give you a better, let's say, context um, to all of this. Now, um, in biomedical engineering, as I said, we are actually joining up the students in the first year. And the first year is basically the foundation where you're generating an understanding, a fundamental understanding, I would say, for the basics. And there we are focusing heavily on maths because maths is um, the language we basically have to learn to work in engineering. Um, beyond maths, you will cover a lot of physics and they will learn more about mechanics, about thermodynamics, and then also um, waves and uh, electricity, because those are all the skills you need in biomedical engineering. Because what we are not doing um, bioengineering, where we are focusing on biology and let's say growing tissues, this is something you can embed later on in your degree, but we are providing you with a general, let's say, um, education, which um, develops you into or which gives you the opportunity to develop into a problem solver in uh, biomedical engineering. 
In addition, you're learning general engineering skills and there in particular project management, engineering methods, um, and then also manufacturing and programming. In year one, you start with programming on a, basic, a very basic level and there you will, for example, program Lego Mindstorm kits, which is good fun. Um, you will learn more about microcontroller programming and also more about rapid prototyping. So basically all those skills you would need if you want to develop something as an engineer. And that's how we are treating you. We are treating you as an engineer or like an engineer and you're just getting more and more skills yeah so you're already set um, basically your paths quite correctly and we are just guiding you to get the right idea now in year two you're focusing already more on biomedical engineering uh, year two is not commonly taught between the different degree programs. There we've got a focus on biomedical engineering, but still you've got some general skills you need to learn. So we are continuing with physics because again, there you need a really strong foundation to work in um, biomedical engineering. There you learn more about electromagnetism, for example, because this is used in biomedical imaging and you will work much more on uh, medical imaging during the later half of the degree. You still continue with physics, uh, with, math, uh, with math as well, general engineering. There you will focus on design skills in particular. You will learn how to use uh, so-called CAD programs, computer aided design programs, where you're basically designing your own parts in a three-dimensional environment on your computer to create then, for example, either instructions for a technician to create parts for yourself, or um, you can also design something, for example, for rapid prototyping. And that's what we are pushing more and more into the degree, getting the right skills to develop already devices rather than just developing instructions you can hand over to somebody. Um, the core biomedical engineering content in year two is then focusing on the structure and function of the human body. And that's one of the modules where you are taught by our colleagues in anatomy and um, human anthropology. And you will actually study the human uh, body, the function of the human body in our um, uh, anatomy facility, where you will study really on the um, teaching um, facility or let's say the, the um, so-called teal facility, which is a cadaver facility, which might sound um, a little bit off-putting if you are not interested in the human body or how the body works, but it's such a valuable facility because it allows you to actually study really the structure and the function of the human body on the human body. It's something we are very thankful for. It's something which is very unique and it's something which brings us also again closer to the application later on when we are designing something because we've got access to this facility. And um, this means that our students learn basically the structure of the human body really on the human body, which helps you to far more better understand the difficulties when it comes to designing, for example, a tool which needs to be um, used with the human body. Um, speaking of tools, you will also learn more about medical instrumentation. There you learn, for example, how you can measure the um, currents coming or the potential coming from the heart muscle. And you learn in this module already how to develop your own device and how to program it. And basically by the end of this module, you will already have the skills to develop something like a digital thermometer. Um, we are pushing, as I said, far more into this direction where you're developing solutions rather than just sitting there and trying to work out um, the answers to difficult physics and math questions. It's far more hands-on. And this is really the takeaway that we are teaching you in this hands-on environment. And I mean, I can talk about this a lot, but in the end, it's the student experience, which is important. And um, our students are satisfied with this, but wherever we see, for example, that the program needs to be changed, our students provide feedback and then we can enhance it. Now I'm drifting slightly off. I still want to talk about year three and year four. In year three, you are learning more about um, surgical tools, medical imaging, and that's again one year where you're going to the hospital, you work there and you learn more about the um, devices we've got there. One of the key um, areas where we are seeing much more development in recent years is biomedical robotics. It's by far not novel any longer. And this means that this is now already an applied, um, sorry, an established uh, application in biomedical engineering. If you're going into a hospital, you are very, very likely going to also come across some sort of robot. And that's why we are teaching our students also um, the use of surgical robotics. And there we are quite, um, 
um, happy as well that we've got access to a DaVinci system, which is one of the most common uh, surgical robots actually. And our students can train on the system again to learn what are the difficulties in surgical robotics. You learn more about um, general uh, imaging, how X-ray, for example, interacts with the human body. You learn more about the clinical environment, how to sterilize, um, for example, surgical tools. But you still have also general engineering skills you need to learn. So you learn more about control and dynamical systems to control something like a robot. But you also learn more about entrepreneurship and how to actually write your um, CV for a job application. Because we know that you need graduate skills as well to be more employable. And that's what we are embedding in the program. Now in your final year, we are focusing far more on uh, the final year project. And we've got then also the um, electors which you can take. So in your final year, you're focusing on something which you are interested in and we can give uh, you the opportunity to actually give your degree your own flavor, you could almost say. Um, so you've got electives in different areas and let's say you are interested in um, imaging, then you can select an elective in um, imaging and you can select your final year project in the same area. Now, this gives you an idea of the entire structure of the degree program. Um, but again, this is not everything. It's about the student experience as well, which we want to focus on. And um, when it comes to the student experience, again, we need to learn more from our students and also our student voice. And that's something which we are embedding in our degree, where we are also allowing students to be part of decision making processes. And we are also providing um, communication at an early point to show how we are organizing things. Uh, Ali, back to you. Thank you, Marcus. Leo. Thank you, Marcus. Um, so I think that has been greatly informative, but there is one aspect that we're missing to discuss, and those are the great opportunities that our students could have uh, in studying abroad. Um, and I think Shi Hong might be able to tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, we do have a lot of uh, good opportunities um, to study abroad. In parallel with our um, biomedical engineering degree studies, we have also have a joint education programs with China, one of the top universities in China called Northeast Universities, where we have 120 students uh, over there. And during the study, um, any of our biomedical engineering can um, have a one year study abroad um, in China, for example, or if you want to see um, opportunities for short visit, for example, spending a month in China. In the past probably seven years in a row, we have um, around 40 students, 30, 40 students each year um, visiting China to Beijing or Shanghai or Shenyang, there's many of the places we visited. Not only just places, but also visiting the big um, manufacturing um, centers and the big company, biomedical companies and hospitals over there to see what um, the medical, big medical devices has been made and also visiting some of the research centers. So that's one of the opportunities there. We have, we luckily working with Chinese embassies and we have a scholarship available for the long term one year studies or short term um, four weeks or eight weeks studies in China. Apart from there, um, Dendi has a very good uh, opportunities to study abroad programs. For example, we have students um, have one year exchange in uh, many of the European countries, uh, Canada, America, Hong Kong and, and Singapore, there's lots of opportunities you can apply for. Normally, those exchanges happen in second year rather than very rarely in third year. I, I think Marcus can comment on that. So there's if you like to travel, although there's a pandemic situation, difficult to travel, but hopefully next year everything go back to normal and travel is and uh, learning something from different culture will be good. We also have a very strong partnership in um, the um, uh, other Asian uh, areas. For example, we have a very good um, partnership in Thailand. 
So we sending students to Thailand for a summer, summer, summer um, internship or a long term one year studies over there. And Malaysia is another one. Um, is where we are um, very, we have a very strong connection over there as well. So for biomedical engineering is a life learning curve and it will be good to learning some from different cultures, different medical system and also to learn from other subjects and uh, area as well. So explore the different things is a very good um, as part of the uh, study, the degree studies and um, in Delhi. So Marcus, anything add on? Yeah, I think I can just probably um, wrap up with some of the key points again about the degree. Um, so in case you have Marcus uh, is still live. I can see, I can over see. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay there. <laughs> That's all right. So just a few key points about the degree. Um, if you're interested in applying, our entry requirements are to A's to B's. Um, the essential subject is math and the preferred second subject would be normally physics, but it can be any engineering or science subject. Um, now, once you are deciding to actually apply for Dundee, great, but if you are not convinced what should, uh, why you should actually come to Dundee. Some of the key points, uh, I think, which are really a take away for you from this session are definitely our, let's say, hands on um, environment, which we can provide the hospital, which we have directly in Dundee, which we are collaborating with. And keep in mind that you can work directly there and you are working together with the surgeons there. You learn from them, you learn from clinical engineers. And that's one of the key areas where we see also our students actually going into after they are graduating. They are keen to go into the hospital to work there and um, we can provide you with the right skills to more easily get into this direct, uh, direction um, for your career because you can already learn the same skills you would normally see if you are getting a training in the hospital. Yeah, you learn more about the facilities, the environment, how things are managed there in the hospital. Um, otherwise, our students, they are very keen to actually continue um, in in education, uh, we've got a lot of students who are graduating who are continuing on an MSc or a PhD. Um, our degree program is still relatively young. We didn't have this many cohorts graduating, but so far we've been very successful. Um, our students have been also very happy about the way we are teaching. We've got recently our NSS results, the National Student Survey, where we were ranked top five in the UK and number one in Scotland. Um, and this is indicating how satisfied our students are with the way we are teaching and the learning environment. Now, student voice is something very important for us. It's something we are promoting. We are really trying to get as much from our students as possible in terms of hearing about their worries, but also about uh, what they would like to see changing. How can we enhance the program? And we are then acting on this. Um, the last thing I want to highlight is that we are really trying to work as much as possible with our students to also keep an active line of communication to make sure that our students are always up to date on things that are developed, but also just during the semester to keep them informed about any changes we might have to make on our timetables if this is happening. So we are keeping our students always informed so that there's no lack of information and uh, anyone might end up not knowing anything about, um, let's say, the timetable. Last point, accreditation, something you might uh, you might be interested in if you think about becoming a chartered engineer. Um, we are currently in the process of uh, applying for our accreditation with the IET. We've got our postgraduate degrees already accredited with the IET. Therefore, we are familiar with um, the system for the accreditation. And um, even though we can't guarantee that we will get the accreditation, we are on a very positive track there. And we are already working with the IET also to provide memberships to our students. Now we are getting to an end of our session. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us or stay just in the chat and put your questions into the Q&A. Um, and we can then also respond to them later on. Otherwise, just have a look on our website and you can find also ways to contact us directly. You can see our names just on here at the moment. Feel free to contact us if there's anything. Otherwise, if there's anything urgent where you think you would like to still get an answer, just stick around. We've got a 10 minute break now, but we can still answer your questions. All right.
So I will just thank again everyone who was helping with the session. Thank you, Alejandra. Thank you, Fergus. Thank you, Jihong. And also thank you, Jonathan. And um, as I said, stick around if you have any questions. And otherwise, we are going to take a short break and then we are continuing at six.